ARXR Interfaces for Vision OS Part 3. On the last video, I created an AR interface for a paginator. I've been working on my controller, and I just want to show you all what I've made. So here you'd have a context card that contains names of people in your contact list. As I rotate the cube, I scroll through the contact card. Using a long press gesture, I can have added functionality. So I just long pressed and I drag down to show other information from that contact. I've got cards that come out for email and phone number. The cards that come out can display other data and you can use them as links as well. Here's how it would look on your Vision Pro. So sure, it's really impractical to have one contact per page. That doesn't make sense in a real application, but we're doing this as an exercise to think differently. How can having a 3D space help us to navigate data more intuitively? And you've got a lot of options for gestures. You've got long press, drag. If anything, this is just a good exercise to learn how to use gestures in Swift and Vision OS. So I'm gonna keep working on this. I'm gonna keep developing it and experimenting, and maybe I'll make something interesting. I'm not gonna go over any of the code in this video, but I think I will break down this app in future videos. There's a lot to it, so uh, it might have to be several parts. But I want the takeaway of this video to be opening up possibilities and ways of thinking about how we interact with 3D, AR, XR spaces. There's a variety of gestures we can use and they can create new ways of helping us visualize data. Think about this, in an AR world, we can visualize data in three dimensions and in new ways that we just can't in 2D space. We even have an advantage in AR space over that of real life space in that our interface does not have to have physical limitations. The thing that you make, it's not required that it could actually work in real life. You can make something completely imaginary. You can make a completely imaginary interface that would never work in real life. And you can make that with 3D models. Like a video game controller is limited physically. Like you have to have standardized parts for the manufacturing process. All controllers are the same. They have to be uniform. They have to be universal. You can't have big controllers for, if you've got big thumbs, you have to just deal with it. If you've got small thumbs, you just have to deal with it. It has to be a one size fits all approach. While an AR controller can be completely customizable. An AR controller can even do things that are physically impossible. Like when the discs come out of my cube that display information. So like I'm imagining a future where uh, you can have controllers that manipulate the world around you and they might look completely foreign to anything we have right now. Uh, but we might have an intuitive way of approaching it, an intuitive way of interacting with it. And that might be the way we interface with our entire range of motion. So just some food for thought and it might not end up being that way. Maybe all this experimentation is for naught. But really, learning to create these interfaces is teaching me more about Vision OS, teaching me more about manipulating 3D models. So it's the same tools I'm learning and you'll learn that maybe one day you'll be able to make a video game with, an AR game. And so it's not a total waste of time to learn about this. And I like to just keep going on with this concept. Let's see what happens. I'm going to keep making... I'm going to keep working on these AR interfaces and try to find some new ways to visualize data using a controller slash interface. I'm going to keep making more of these. The videos to teach the code behind this app are coming soon and I'm going to be making those soon. So like and subscribe and stay tuned. Thanks for watching.